decision tree is one of the most commonly used algorithms in the world outside, in the practical world, for some reasons as you will see down the line. Now it may not be one of the best algorithms under all situations. Under some situations you will see that your logistic regression probably gives you better results than decision tree. But still there is something about decision tree which makes it stand out. So let's see what is that something about decision tree. And before I go too far, there is no one single algorithm which is considered as the best algorithm. In production, we might use a mix of algorithms, put them together in one group. That group is called an ensemble, a French word. And we put that group as one single model. The ensemble technique will be covered tomorrow. We'll cover that tomorrow. Okay. So don't be under any impression that this algorithm is better than that algorithm. No such, there's no such uh, reality. Some algorithms perform well in the, some situations. Other algorithms perform well in other situations. So we always use a group. Have you seen decision tree before? People who come with a lot of experience, management experience, decision tree is a very standard management tool that is used under certain specific conditions. Can you tell me what the conditions are in which we use decision trees? What could be those situations where they use decision trees? In fact, decision trees used in our day-to-day -day life, we all use it every day. What should be our strategy? How should I, so that minimize my risk? Yeah, it is a kind of flowchart, if else. It helps you to take decisions in those situations where multiple states are possible and you don't know what's going to happen. You want to minimize your risk. So decision tree is one of the standard techniques that is employed to decide what action to take, what sequence of steps to take. People who have used decision tree, you will find a lot of similarity between what I'm going to do and how it has been used already. Shall we look at this now, decision tree? Let me give you, for people who have not been exposed to decision tree, some brief idea about what this is. It can be used for classification as well as regression. The most of the time it is used for classification. Since you people have done a linear model, what was the data set on which you build a linear model? Was it MPG, miles per gallon data set? Was it? Cars, miles per gallon. What is the accuracy you got? Overall accuracy. 74 percent, 75, 76, that's the range in which you'll get for that particular data set. Miles per gallon data set, the linear model will give you in the range of 74 to 76. Use decision tree on that. It'll give you 85 plus percentage accuracy. A phenomenal jump in terms of accuracy percentage, 85 percent plus, right? That is the beauty of this. So it can be used for classification, it can be used for regression, both, mostly used for classification. It consists of what we call the nodes and the branches, where the nodes represent some decision you're taking or some functions you're going to execute, some logical functions. Those functions will be executed on your independent attributes, the columns in your data frame. People who have not seen decision tree earlier before, this is the overall structure of decision tree. It can continue to any level. I'm just showing you some few levels. This is called the root node. All the things which are in, uh, what do you call, what is the shape called? Um, oval, oval. All these oval shapes are my nodes. Nodes represent any function call that you're going to make on your independent attributes. The result of the function can be this or this, binary result, true or false. So this is the result of the function executed here. These are the results of the function executed here. So at each node, 
we execute a function. All these are functions. This one is called the root node. And all those nodes which are not further divided, they are called leaf level nodes. LEAF, leaf. In between the leaf nodes and the root node, you have these function nodes. The algorithm that we are going to use, it is called CART, classification and regression trees. CART, classification and regression trees. It is a binary tree creator. It creates only two branches in every node. There are some commercially available algorithms which can create multiple branches at each node. You might be wondering why two, no, why two branches, why not three branches? There are commercial algorithms available, but the one which we use in scikit-learn, it is open source. It is called CART. Some of you might be wondering, that means it can be used only for binary classification. A decision tree can be used for character recognition in your English alphabet. How many characters are there in English alphabet? 26. You can use decision tree to classify those characters into 26 classes. So what will happen is it will do A versus others, B versus others, C versus, it will convert into binary. So it can be used for multi-class classification. It doesn't have to be binary class only. Just because the nature of the algorithm is to split it into two every time does not mean it can be used only for binary classification. It can be used for multi-class classification. All right. Mm, what happens is at, at the leaf level, the nodes are of three types, root node, branch nodes and the leaf nodes, the three types. At the branch nodes, we have the functions and then the result of the functions. The root node represents your entire data frame, data set. Suppose you are using decision tree for classification. You are going to classify things. For classification problem, whether a given record, whether a given image belongs to an airplane or a ship or a zebra, you want to classify a given image into one of these three categories. What decision tree will do is, it will tell you the probability. The probability that this is an aeroplane is 70 percent, probability that is a zebra is 2 percent, probability is something else is 30 percent, I mean, it will give a percentage. Those percentages are given at this level, the leaf level. Those percentages are called posterior probabilities. By any chance you covered probability based analysis like naive base? Not yet, right? So there we will talk about something called posterior probability. When you do those analysis, you will be talking about prior probabilities and posterior probabilities. Posterior means after knowing all these things, what is the probability that this belongs to a particular class? Hence the name posterior. I think it is voice operated. Hello. Yeah, there you go. So the, the question is, uh, what do we mean by leaf node belongs to the majority class? So what happens is, suppose you have a data set for simplicity's sake, let us take only two classes, okay, you have a data set here and these are independent attributes, I1, I1, I2, I3, so on and so forth and the target variable is a class, okay. In the class, there can be two types, one is defaulter. Other one is non-defaulter, defaulter, non-defaulter. You are working in a bank. The management in the bank has asked you to create a model where the model should take as input the parameters about the various customers, the income, the age category, where the person lives, so on and so forth. And the model should tell you what is the probability that this person will be a defaulter versus non-defaulter. All right, all of you with me? Okay. So the, the bank gives you all the historical data of people who have taken the loans 
some of them were defaulters, some of them were non-defaulters. Till now, are you all with me? Okay. Now, uh, when you create a decision tree, what happens is all this entire data set is used at your root node. There is a lot of detail to it. I will come to those details gradually. And then, based on some function which is executed on one of these att independent attributes, your data gets split into two. When the data gets split into two, here also you have some records, here also you have some records. Find out what is the majority here, defaulters or non-defaulters? Find out what is the majority here, defaulters or non-defaulters? Suppose the majority here is defaulters, then this node gets the label of defaulters. Suppose the majority here is non-defaulters, this gets the label of non-defaulters, but please understand it is not 100% non-defaulters, it is not 100% defaulters. It is a mix, but the majority is this. All right. Since it's not a, it's still a mix, majority is this, I apply some other function on some other attribute on this data set and further split it. So this small data set gets further split into smaller set and in this data set, suppose all of them are, all of them are only defaulters, then this node does not need to be split any further. It is already completely known. So, I know that when somebody follows this path, he is likely to be defaulted. So, I do not need to further split. On the other hand, this one has still got some mix of default or non-defaulters. Suppose the majority of them are non-defaulters. So, on some other function which is executed on one of the other attributes, this data will be split again and suppose the split is such that all these are non-defaulters, all these are defaulters, then you do not need to further split this. Now I know under what combination can a person become a defaulter, maybe this combination of functions, this combination of functions. So at every node it will find out what is the majority class. The label of the majority class will be assigned to the node. But the fact is, unless you are at the leaf level, whenever you are in between the leaf and the root, the nodes will always be mixed. They will be contaminated. They will not be pure nodes. We want to reach a stage in our decision tree algorithm where we have pure nodes. Pure nodes means nodes which belong to complete defaulters only or non-defaulters only. When I reach that stage, then I know under what combination somebody becomes a defaulter, under what combination somebody becomes non-defaulter. So I know all those combinatorials, if I may say so, which lead somebody to become defaulter and the other combinatorials which lead somebody to become non default This is the pattern I am looking for. This is the model I am looking for. What you call linear models which finds out the best fit surface for you, best fit line for you, which expresses the relationship between the independent variables and the target variable. The decision tree expresses the relationship between independent variables and the target class using these paths. The paths tell you how these independent variables are related to the target class. That is my model. And the beauty of decision tree is, well, not in scikit-learn, in uh, the other language R, I can convert this whole decision tree into English rules. So, I will print out rules for me. If the person's income group is this and his age is that and his education qualification is this, very likely is going to be non-defaulter. That English rules I convert into Java code and uh, deploy it as my model. There is much more to it than what I have told you. I will take you through the details, 
but to answer your question that is what this means. All right. So, if you are doing classification, then the objective of decision tree algorithm is to create as pure nodes as possible. Pure. Pure means the nodes should belong to only one class. That is the objective. In case you are using decision tree for regression, calculating the miles per gallon values, then the objective is at each node, the variance of the data points should be minimized. Now look at this. All of you know what is variance? What is variance? What is variance? Don't give me the formula. I'm not asking for formula. Understand the concepts. Variance is on an average how dissimilar two data points are. Variance means on an average how dissimilar a data point is from the central value. Xi minus x bar raised to power 2 divided by n. That is what we call variance. So you under root it, it's called standard deviation. All these are nothing but a way of expressing how dissimilar a point is from the central value. All of you okay? The objective of the decision tree is collect all those records into the different cells such that the variance within a cell is minimized. All similar records come together in a leaf level the variance within the cell is minimized, right? It might sound slightly Greek or Latin to you right now. When you go further down the road and do some hands-on, bring up all these questions that are probably bothering you right now. 